All right, how to change the PTO clutch off of a Skag model SW48V. Um, I didn't see a lot of videos online on this specific model and the ones that were there skip past the hard part, which is the fact that they lined up the axle with the bolt you need to take off. And so you can't really get an impact on this. And you need an impact because the regular wrench just turns the engine. So the first step is to get this bolt so you can get an impact on it. So first step, disengage the uh, belt blades so that loosens up that the pulley. Second step, this is the way I found it. Remove the four bolts holding on the engine. I just replaced this engine, put back the old PTO, only to burn it out 20 minutes later, so I'm doing it again. So the way I found it to be easiest is to remove the four bolts holding this engine on. That's going to give you the ability to move back the entire engine about two inches, which will offset it on that pulley. So right now I've unbolted those. I'm just going to pull this engine back to that gas. That those two inches right there are all you're going to need to get that impact. All right, so. I pushed the engine back about two inches, which is all we'll need. And when you look down here, see now you can get enough clearance between that bolt and that axle to get an impact on there. Like I said, which is why you need to get an impact so that the engine just doesn't turn when you go to wrench it off. So I'm going to impact this thing off. Alright, so that, that impacted right off is the bolt still hot from coming off. That just came right off. Now the whole thing dropped right down onto the axle. So you can wiggle it off from this point, but it's a lot more difficult to line up this pin when you need to line it up, kind of wiggle it in under there. So what made it way easier was putting this engine that's disconnected on um, two blocks, um, so inch and a half blocks on either side of it, gives you another inch and a half of clearance down here. It makes it 10 times easier to line this whole pin system up, put the new one on. So I'm gonna lock the engine right now. Alright, so the engine's now an inch and a half higher on either side. So what we're going to do is now drop the PTO out and that's going to give us much more room and then when we go to reinstall it, it'll be a lot easier. You won't be messing around with it as much and then you're going to start it it's not going to go all the way up because it's sitting higher than it needs to be. You're going to start, get that pin and PTO in place, get that bolt started nice and snug, and then remove the blocks to set the engine back down before you tighten the bolt. I forgot to mention, obviously, there's a uh, little harness wire right there that's holding the wire on. Again, you can just cut your wire off, but you're not going to be able to get the new one on. So you get to disconnect this uh, wire harness and um, obviously unclip, unclip the, the PTO, the old one. I don't know why 
my PTO just randomly stopped, stopped working. I'm starting to clunk up, but the second wire just somehow shaved itself off. I don't know if I didn't put it back right when I uh, reinstalled this brand new engine. But, or if it just broke now. I don't know when I was dropping it. But either way, it's not going to work. So, we got the new Alright, so we got the old clutch I shaped out the wire probably because I didn't install it right when I put it back in the new engine I don't know what I did but I was going anyways it was finicky it would heat up and start just turning off so, I don't know if we're chafing the whole time or but here's a new clutch. And the reason why you kind of want all the room you want is because. What the heck did I do with it? Is because, um, obviously, the, the engine shaft right up there has got a, uh, a slot for a pin to sit. And I'm going to rotate it so it's facing me by pulling the. Uh, Star. All right, so you can see, kind of over rotated. I'm actually gonna change that. All right, so the reason why this thing's the pin is because this whole pin needs to set up in there, and also that sits in the uh, the pulley for your drive system pulley up there it sits in there and also sits in the, this PTO so problem is with the axle in the way and not having all this clearance all right so now we have the pin engaged up here ready to go to accept PTO focus in there it is so now it's all lined up on the back side we got plenty of room to slide it in without hitting that axle so I'm gonna have pin handy I'm gonna slide it in there and then start the threads um, get it started before I drop the engine off those blocks Alright, so I got the thread started. You're only going to be able to get, you know, four turns at most. But now we got to drop the engine off the blocks so we can tighten it down the whole way. So I'm going to remove the blocks that I have it on right now. And because we don't need those clearance anymore. Alright. Blocks are removed. Now we should be able to just push the whole unit up into place and tighten the uh, tighten the, the PTO nut. All right. So now we are ready to put the belt back on. This is your dry belt right here. Here's how it goes. Goes to the inside. Touch the four bolts back on, engine mount, one back there. One right there by the oil drain and one another one back there. So the engine's mounted back on, sitting in place. The dry pulley's tight. This is your blade pulley, which will retighten when you do the blades. You know, we're ready to clip our PTO back on and attach the guide wire from the the deck. It's a little bright. Put that guide the, the guide harness there back on. Alright. <clears throat> clip 
the wire back in. Put the guide bolt in here. Put it down there. Reattach that. Reattach the uh, blade belt. Um, this tag came with it. PTO clutch procedure break in. Looks like it wants you to turn it on about 25 times at three quarter speed on the engine. Give it a 10 second break, and you're good to go.